Hey everybody, this is Matt. Welcome to another Force of Will deck spotlight. Today we have for you the Digital Underground deck. Uh, if, you're not, if you're not familiar where this deck gets its name, uh, just Google Digital Underground Humpty Dance and you'll figure it out. Uh, for those of you that might be newer to the game and might not know the complete backstory, uh, I've basically been playing Yamada since February. We've been trying to cheat him into play in different ways and trying to find a way to make him playable. Um, when the GG team came to me, they said, you know, what did this deck really gain? And, you know, it's it's basically reflect and a year ago list, as someone pointed out to me. That's It's actually true, but the how much value reflect adds to the deck is just absolutely insane with the amount of filtering that it can do, and it gives another free pump for Yamada. Uh, turns out doing free things is very, very good. So they wanted to make a deck. Uh, shout out to everyone on the Team GG team that actually took the time. They play tested it. They changed. I mean, they probably changed about a, uh, 12, 10 to 12 cards for my initial list um, and made it the fine-tuned beast that it is today. So uh, Chase Gosgrove piloted to a undefeated finish, uh, taking down our ARG Christmas player appreciation event and was just tearing through the competition with doing you know, an upwards of 9,600 damage in a turn. So uh, this deck is an absolute beast to play, and I will go over the ruler, talk about the stone base, talk about the main board, and then we'll get even, we'll show you guys the sideboard that we used for that event as well, and maybe some of the key cards that help Chase actually take down the event. So up first we have Reflect, the ruler himself, the ruler that is Maybe a little too good, but at least he's making us see, you know, six, seven different decks in top eight events, even if they're all using the same ruler. Uh, what makes this guy so great is his ability to be able to filter, have a free card draw. Um, there's just a lot that he's doing for this deck. So when you're playing the Yamada combo deck, you have not only a free way to pump him, which was one of the biggest things that you had to worry about getting in older versions. Uh, he helps you filter to find the combo pieces. Um, and then he has an untap effect, which isn't really the most relevant but you know you might find an application where it's needed and then on refrain side um, this card has just been absolutely insane it lets you tutor up the last pieces it lets you bounce an annoying resonator if you need to stall or get by a couple a little bit more time to set up your combo uh, this ruler literally just does everything for the deck and without this ruler the deck would probably not be playable or as playable as it is today so uh, as much as everyone loves to hate the Wonder Twins, I am all for having them uh, as they are right now. Going into the stone base, uh, you might guess that we are playing a lot of Regalia, so what better way than playing four of Ruler's Memoria. So this literally is just for sideboarding options, you know, it, it helps for color filtering if we don't have a deep blue. Uh, just being able to tap for every single color really opens up sideboarding options and is great for players who you know, they might be expecting a different meta, or they know how Shadow Barrier, for example, might need to be played, but this is the only way that you'd actually be able to get into play. Playing as a 4 of, you know, you're going to see it in those early turns, more often than not, you know, you're going to see him in every, at least one every game. Uh, and it's been absolutely helpful in making sure that we have the colors that we need to make the plays that we need to on time. Up next is the Four Stones of Light Vapors. Um, you know, might no notice that we're playing Cheshire Cat, Humpty Dumpty. We are playing a blue-based uh, combo list, so all our stones being able to tap for water attribute is very important. And then, of course, the other colors that we can get, either filtering through Deep Blue or through the Ruler's Memorial, really do help out a lot as well. Uh, one of Hearth's Core, playing this for the Demon Flames and for other utility where we might need that early red uh, to help against the other aggressive strategies or again sideboarding options just have a fifth uh, fire will uh, attribute when we need it. Last but not least and the staple of every Yamada deck ever Little Red the Pure Stone. Uh, another example of a free or basically very low costed resource because you do have to tap it to give him the plus 200 plus 200 but when Yamada himself taps eight times that's really you know an extra 1600 damage for what's well, essentially free if you're already comboing off. So it goes in your stone deck, it's a free pump, you don't have to worry about finding, and it just sits on the field waiting for you to use it. So this card will forever be used in the Yamada deck as long as Yamada is popular. Now going into the main deck, and we're just doing these by cost. Uh, for Change World or Revolution, uh, if you've been on the Facebook uh, Force Will US page, if you spent even a day looking, you would realize that everyone can absolutely agree how busted this card is. 
Uh, you know, by themselves, Reflect and Refrain are pretty good, and this card by itself is pretty good. Um, if, you know, Reflect didn't have all the other uh, stuff that it could do with them, but the ability to add more counters or add the ability to untap and then bounce two things in a turn, or even if you're just drawing a card with it, um, and that is a relevant mode in this deck as well, since we have the Ruler's Memorial, we can tap the green. This card is, uh, this is just insane with Reflect and Refrain, so even if you can only use two of the three modes, you know, this, this card is finding its way into almost every single Reflect deck that I've seen uh, that are topping major events. So if you're not playing three or four orbs already in your Reflect deck, I would very strongly encourage doing so. More Regalia all the time, so then we have four of the God's Bow. Um, no surprises here, you know, one of the biggest threats to any combo deck <clears throat> can be like a hyper-aggressive strategy or someone that's actually going to race your clock um, outside of your traditional control deck, so we wanted to find a way that we'd be able to control the early board presence, and you know, when this combos with the card, I'll go into later Demon Flame, it can really destroy some mid-range matches for you as well. So this was kind of an auto-include since we needed it for Ruler's Memoria anyways. And then the card that I am still getting made fun of and still, uh, you know, people are still giving me a hard time about because I just didn't think about it. So, four of Deep Blue. Um, turns out being able to discard it for the extra blue so you can play Humpty Dumpty on two was the last, like, breakthrough moment the team had when they were test testing the deck and being able to fine-tune it. Um, some, you know, sometimes you just go for the aggressive turn two Humpty play, they're not going to have any response to it, and then you can just go for a turn three, you know, Cheshire Cat, crack Humpty Dumpty, and then have a rapid growth plus the free reflect pump to just be lethal on turn three. Um, I think it was Daryl on the team, Daryl or Chase, who added this card, and once they added it, it was just the final missing piece for the deck is what it felt like, and was absolutely insane in testing, and, oh, you know, performed very, very well for the deck uh, as well. <clears throat> Going into our one drops, we have two rapid growths, um, <clears throat> just a good card for pumping Yamada. Again, you have to fa factor in, you're, you're attacking eight times, you're giving it any kind of a boost, you know, in this case, plus 400, plus 400, that's going to translate to a lot of damage that's coming their way. So this is actually just another tutorable pump spell. I mean, you can tutor anything out of the deck, but it lets you get in that extra damage when you might need it. Uh, for Cheshire Cat, this is just for setting up the deck, or if you need those early turn blockers or need to filter away a car, this is one of the better ways to do it. Uh, mostly, you do want to save these for being able to cast... <clears throat> or sorry, to cheat Yamada off the top of your deck with Interplay of hum Humpty Dumpty, but sometimes you'll have two cats in hand and it's perfectly fine to run one out there early if necessary. Then going into the last one drop in the deck, four Demon Flame. Uh, as I was ram rambling out about the God's Bow, uh, this is extremely important for those early game aggressive decks or for everyone that's playing the turn 1.5 Faith Sing. Uh, if you, if you ha watch them going for the untapped trigger, it is very, very important to just Demon Flame their Elvish Priest out of the way, uh, or they're going to get an insane tempo out of you and be so far ahead in the game in terms of a resource. And if they follow that up with, say, a turn two Elvish Oracle, uh, then you're going to be in a world of hurt trying to get off your combo and having to realize that you have to pay one more anytime you want to do something. So that's something that you then have to play around for the rest of the game, which can be quite annoying. Going into our two drops, we have a one of Glinda, uh, this is really just for making Yamada unblockable. It's tutorable, so it's fine having it as a one-up in the deck. Uh, several times in testing, I would have some kind of invincible wall set up or something that was just, you know, they would not be able to get through it. And then they had a Realm of Pure Spirits uh, into Glinda, so I couldn't target it, I couldn't block it, and I was literally just dead from that point on. So Glinda is definitely a very techie, very much needed one of in the deck since you can tutor for it. Speaking of Realm of Pure Spirits, Card, just uh, another, again, overperforming card that if you're going against a dark base deck and they want to use dark base removal, guess what? You get to say no. Um, that card has been very important in resolving cer certain strategies in the deck that will eventually win you through the game, or sometimes you just get to attack with a Humpty Dumpty, which is an 8-8, uh, and then they'll try to go and waste your removal on it, and then you just crack it anyways, and you have the Yamada on top. So <clears throat> the thing I love about this deck is it does force them to have to play around with attacking Humpty Dumpty as well, which, sure, if you block it, you know, you're gonna you might take 800 less damage, but how much are they going to be able to pump Yamada for, and is it better just to block one of the Yamada, uh, one of his eight attacks, things like that. So it puts your opponent in a very awkward situation, which has been <clears throat> pretty good for the deck. Uh, as far as for another techie choice, there's a one of Dream of Juliet. 
Uh, this card I watched destroy a mountain mortal, which then the digital underground player was able to just untap and win. Um, so that was really funny to watch. And I asked him after the match, he's like, man, how did you how did you win that game? Like, he just shuts off your Cheshire Cat, so you can't really, like, set the deck like you want to. He's like, oh, you know, remember that Dream of Juliet you said was a bad card to have main deck? Uh, yeah, I just tutored for it and destroyed it and won the next turn. I'm like, all right, you know, turns out this is still a very good card that not a lot of people who are playing light-based decks are using, which absolutely breaks my heart and breaks Tyler Norris's heart, probably more than anything, because he's been quoted several times that this is his favorite spell uh, in the game. And it's, the card just does pretty much everything that you want. Uh, going to another kind of protect the plans card is Keen Sense. This helps you if they're trying to play a Horn Regalia and you just happen to have the will available, you know, you can counter it. Um, it lets you counter Stormy Death if you anticipate that coming, but maybe don't have Royal Pure Spirits, things like that. So uh, I don't think the Destroying Chance Standby was ever relevant from the games that I watched or the games that we played, but it's also, you know, you're not playing Gretel, so Absolute Cake Zone is strictly worse in this sense. So you might as well play Keen Sense and have the, if you run into a Persephone player, you know, they're going to get hit by it. So that might work to your advantage. And then for the last two drop, another card that I completely uh, overlooked as well until we play tested it uh, and got the chance to see how well it was, was Rewriting Laws. Um, this is a card that on release a lot of people were just like, oh, I'm going to put in every win deck. It's like you're running a 36 uh, card deck. That's not exactly how it works. Yes, you're drawing a card. Yes, you're untapping those two will stones. But unless you're actively doing something with those two will stones in that turn, um, it can be a very wasted card, so you still have to build the deck with that in mind that if I'm going to use this card, I want to combo with something that I'm not going to lose tempo uh, in that turn, or I'm going to gain some kind of huge advantage off playing this card this way, that it's worth playing in the deck. And if you play this combo deck that has just insane amount of draw power, filtering power, you very quickly realize that there's plenty of things or plenty of combination of two drops or playing a Realm of Pure Spirit. There's other things that you can be doing while dig digging up <clears throat> extra combo pieces. So I think this might find more of a home in combo decks going forward. Uh, I'm trying to, you know, it's very interesting to see where development is going to go with this card in the future, but I very much am looking forward to it and seeing how this deck, or this card is played in other decks in the future. And then getting into the last eight cards, the combo themselves, the, the uh, deck's namesake, the champion himself, the guy who fell off the wall, Humpty Dumpty. Um, <laughs> way back in February when we first built, you know, this version, it was just Cheshire Cat, Humpty Dumpty, Yamada. Um, we had Refarth for the pump spell, uh, and we didn't have anything like Lay the Foundation. We didn't have a good ruler. We were actually using, uh, Bloody Snow White as the ruler when the first two sets came out, uh, for the additional pump. So it was a turn four win Humpty Dump or a turn four win Yamada. Um, and it, again, it's, it's eerily close to this deck, but Humpty Dumpty time, time again, 8-8 eight, eight body. You can play it on turn two with Deep Blue, which is just insane with the threat that that uh, presents your opponent. And, you know, sometimes just attacking for eight and then cracking a Yamada, you know, for the rest of the damage is just enough to get there. So that is why he is still the king of the deck and why we switched to this card is because, for those that don't know, if you somehow don't know by now, is we love this guy. He is our fiery lord and savior, uh, Yamada no Orochi, the eight disasters. Uh... Again, this has been my favorite card since February. Uh, combo player from other card game backgrounds. Uh, so this is right at home for me. You're never playing this guy on 10. You know, target attacks, you can get, you can board wipe with him. You pump him, you attack eight times, it's lethal. Uh, there's just so many things that this card is going to be doing for you. If you're not setting up an OTK, at least it's a board wipe where it gets rid of problematic uh, J rulers if you bump, buff him the correct way. Um, to me, this card is, is just does everything you want and it gets it gets the job done uh, depending on what ways you want to use it so sometimes you just board wipe the opponent and then go for the kill on the next turn card is absolutely insane so for those that might not be familiar with it just to show you the combo in card form uh, you play Humpty Dumpty uh, if you have enough will you're probably playing this on turn two and passing your opponent you know or you're playing it on turn three if you didn't have the ramp and passing it to your opponent and then on the next turn, when you have the cards in hand, you play the Cheshire Cat. Uh, this lets you set the top card of your deck. You draw two cards, um, put one card back, and then you attack with Humpty Dumpty, see if they have any responses. Um, chances are they won't, because they kind of know what's coming. Deal the eight damage, 
crack uh, Humpty Dumpty, Cheetah and Yamada. So if we're doing this early, you know, we still have uh, a will left, or we still have some other activated abilities. If we're on four, we have two left. And then you can play a rapid growth into, you know, a free reflect pump, or if you, depending on the turn, you can do a free pure stone pump. And very quickly, you're looking at a absolutely huge Yamada that your opponent is just dead to. So that was the highlight of this deck building experience, and I'm so happy that the team was able to put this together and make it work for the event. And, you know, <clears throat> we had we were supposed to have two Yamada players in the top eight, but unfortunately, breakers were not that friendly. So uh, I'll just go over the sideboard real quick just to say what he played against. Uh, three Rapid Decay, again, maybe we were just oversaturated with Turbo Arthur and we knew that, you know, we have to kill those turn one Elvis Priest. Uh, the, the old term is Bolt the Bird, uh, so you always want to destroy their Will Accelerator on turn one if possible. And especially if you see an Elvis Priest and they're playing Reflect Refrain, I would be very cautious, or very worried rather, that they're going to be trying to cheat in a Feast Thing uh, a lot earlier than what you would like. Uh, the next card is Four of Final Forfeit. Uh, this card has just been good for everything. Uh, getting rid of Arthurs, turning off uh, problematic Valentinas. Uh, the card just does a lot of stuff for you, and there's many other applications I'm sure that we'll see in the future that there's a very good chance this card is going to see a lot of play uh, going forward. So I would keep this on your guys' radar if you're building a deck that has those colors. Uh, three of Elvish Bowman. Uh, this is another card as we're seeing the rise um, and Barriers of Shadows, you know, for other decks are just still having a problem with Shangri-Las or Realm of, of Countering Realm of Pure Spirits, things like that. You know, Destroying Additions is still uh, very relevant and something that we should be looking out for as well. Speaking on more Addition Hate or just a very versatile card is 3 Send Back. Uh, this card does a lot, and I wish it was an instant. Yes, it'd be too good if it was an instant, so we'll just deal with it. Um, but... Sometimes you just need more counters off your Regalia Bow, uh, you know, things like that. Sometimes you just need to reset one of their creatures to swing in for a win. There's a lot of different things that this card can be used for. So another very versatile card that I think we'll see more play as cyborgs start to develop or as the meta develops further. And then lastly, Sign of the Future. Um, this card is great against fairies because, I mean, at least all the fairy builds that I've seen or that I've you know, put out there for other people to play is you always want to go for the turn two Vivian into triple untap Vivian and you'll have, you know, five creatures going into your next turn so that you can just play a sprint or you play a couple flame sprites or something of that nature where you're just going to kill your opponent. Um, that way it's time of the future, you're at least getting rid of the Vivian and maybe a flame sprite or water sprite depending on what they play from their hand and that's still helping you survive that game because getting rid of Vivian means they don't get the buff <clears throat> and we found out recently that the deck really doesn't need Sprint. You're either winning before Sprint is relevant or Sprint was a win more card. So Sign of the Future is just an all-in-all -all great card against them. So thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for, again, huge shout-out to the GG team that's making this deck. Uh, made it real. Shout-out to Chase Cosgrove, who was the person behind the entire th uh, thing and taking down. Sorry, not the guy behind, behind the entire thing, but the guy who took down the entire event is what I mean to say. Um, this was 100% a team effort and sh goes to show the importance of working with the team and how far ahead that'll set you when you have multiple people working on a deck together. So thank you for watching, everyone. Make sure to drop a like or comment. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'll be having some more deck tech videos coming up, uh, all the showcase in the top eight decks that we had recently. And we'll catch you guys next time on the Force of Will Deck Spotlight. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, make sure to hit subscribe or check out one of our other video series. And don't forget to stop by the Force of Will US website for articles, a helpful database, and more. Event. So if you're not playing three or four orbs already in your reflect deck, I would very strongly encourage doing so. More regalia all the time. So then we have four of the God's Bow. Um, no surprises here. You know, one of the biggest threats to any combo deck <clears throat> can be like a hyper aggressive strategy or someone that's actually going to race your clock um, outside of your traditional control deck. So we wanted to find a way that we'd be able to 
control the early board presence, and you know when this combos with the card, I'll go to later Demon Flame, it can really destroy some mid-range matches for you as well. So this was kind of an auto-include since we needed it for Ruler's Memoria anyways. And then the card that I am still getting made fun of and still, uh, you know, people are still giving me a hard time about because I just didn't think about it. So four of Deep Blue. Um, turns out being able to discard it for the extra blue so you can play Humpty Dumpty on two was the last like breakthrough moment the team had when they were test testing the deck and being able to fine tune it. Um, some you know sometimes you just go for that aggressive turn two Humpty play. They're not going to have any response to it, and then you can just go for a turn three you know Cheshire Cat crack Humpty Dumpty and then have a rapid growth plus the free reflect pump to just be lethal on turn three. Um, I think it was Daryl on the team, Daryl or Chase, who added this card. And once they added it, it was just the final missing piece for the deck is what it felt like and was absolutely insane in Jason Vent and was just tearing through the competition with doing, you know, an upwards of 9,600 damage in a turn. So uh, this deck is an absolute beast to play. And I will go over the ruler, talk about the stone base, talk about the main board, and then we'll get even, we'll show you guys the sideboard that we used for that event as well and maybe some of the key cards that help Chase actually take down the event. So up first we have Reflect, the ruler himself, the ruler that is maybe a little too good, but at least he's making us see, you know, six, seven different decks in top eight events, even if they're all using the same ruler. Uh, what makes this guy so great is his ability to be able to filter, have a free card draw. Um, there's just a lot that he's doing for this deck. So when you're playing the Yamada combo deck, you have not only a free way to pump him, which was one of the biggest things that you had to worry about getting in older versions. Uh, he helps you filter to find the combo pieces. Um, and then he has an untap effect, which isn't really the most relevant, but you know you might find an application where it's needed. And then on Refrain side, um, this card has just been absolutely insane. It lets you tutor up the last pieces. It lets you bounce an annoying resonator if you need to stall or get buy a couple, a little bit more time to set up your combo. Uh, this ruler literally just does everything for the deck. And without this ruler, the deck would probably not be playable or as playable as it is today. So uh, as much as everyone loves to hate the... Hey everybody, this is Matt. Welcome to another Force of Will deck spotlight. Today we have for you the Digital Underground deck. Uh, if, you're not, if you're not familiar where this deck gets its name, uh, just Google Digital Underground Humpty Dance and you'll figure it out. Uh, for those of you that might be newer to the game and might not know the complete backstory, uh, I've basically been playing Yamada since February. We've been trying to cheat him into play in different ways and trying to find a way to make him playable. Um, when the GG team came to me, they said, you know, what did this deck really gain? And, you know, it's, it's basically Reflect and a year ago list, as someone pointed out to me. That's, it's actually true, but the, how much value Reflect adds to the deck is just absolutely insane with the amount of filtering that it can do. And it gives another free pump for Yamada. Uh, turns out doing free things is very, very good. So they wanted to make a deck. Uh, shout out to everyone on the Team GG team that actually took the time. They play tested it. They changed I mean, they probably changed about a, uh, 12, 10 to 12 cards for my initial list um, and made it the fine-tuned beast that it is today. So uh, Chase Gosgrove piloted to a undefeated finish, uh, taking down our ARG Christmas player appreciate Need it. Last but not least, and the staple of every Yamada deck ever, Little Red the Pure Stone. Uh, another example of a free or basically very low-costed resource, because you do have to tap it to give him the plus 200, plus 200. But when Yamada himself taps eight times, that's really you know an extra 1,600 damage for what's essentially free if you're already comboing off. So it goes in your stone deck, it's a free pump, you don't have to worry about finding, and it just sits on the field waiting for you to use it. So this card will forever be used in the Yamada deck as long as Yamada is popular. Now going into the main deck, and we're just doing these by cost. Uh, four Change World or Revolution. Uh, if you've been on the Facebook uh, Force Will US page, if you spent even a day looking, you would realize that everyone can absolutely agree how busted this card is. Uh, you know, by themselves, Reflect and Refrain are pretty good, and this card by itself is pretty good. Um, if, you know, 
Reflect didn't have all the other uh, stuff that it could do with him, but the ability to add more counters or add the ability to untap and then bounce two things in a turn, or even if you're just drawing a card with it, um, and that is a relevant mode in this deck as well, since we have the Ruler's Memorial, we can tap the green. This card is, uh, this is just insane with Reflect and Refrain, so even if you can only use two of the three modes, you know, this, this card is finding its way into almost every single Reflect deck that I've seen uh, that are topping major. Wonder Twins, I am all for having them uh, as they are right now. Going into the stone base, uh, you might guess that we are playing a lot of Regalia, so what better way than playing four of Ruler's Memoria? So this literally is just for sideboarding options, you know, it, it helps for color filtering if we don't have a deep blue. Uh, just being able to tap for every single color really opens up sideboarding options and is great for players who, you know, they might be expecting a different meta or they know how Shadow Barrier, for example, might need to be played, but this is the only way that you'd actually be able to get into play. Playing as a four of, you know, you're going to see it in those early turns more often than not. You know, you're going to see him in every, at least one every game. Uh, and it's been absolutely helpful in making sure that we have the colors that we need to make the plays that we need to on time. Up next is the four stones of light vapors. Um, you know, might no notice that we're playing Cheshire Cat, Humpty Dumpty. We are playing a blue based uh, combo list. So all our stones being able to tap for water attribute is very important and then of course the other colors that we can get either filtering through deep blue or through the rulers memorial really do help out a lot as well uh, one of hearth's core playing this for the demon flames and for other utility where we might need that early red uh, to help against the other aggressive strategies or again sideboarding options just have a fifth uh, fire will uh, attribute when we